Today, we're gonna show you a game we call ABC Slam Dunk. It's a beanbag toss game that gives your kids an opportunity to work on some of those early literacy skills. So, let's get started. All right, guys, so we got some beanbags, we got some letters, and we have some words, and we're gonna play a few games. You guys ready to play? Yeah. All right, come on. Attach your letter or word cards to some bins, and then you call out a word or the letter, and then you give the kids a chance to throw the beanbags to the corresponding bin. Here. Oh, that's, bro, that's pretty good. <laughs> An example of how that might work is to say, hey, Lennon, take the red beanbag and throw it in the bin that has the L on it. So that gives her an opportunity to work on primary colors as well as working on the letter recognition. Now we have our letter cards, we have our word cards, we have our sealable plastic bags, we have a bowl of beans, we have a pair of scissors, we have some tape, and we have several little felt patches. Oh, and we have some glue. So, now we're gonna put all those things together to make our bean bags. So we're gonna start off by taking this bigger plastic bag and turning it into a smaller bag for the bean bags. Make the second cut. Now I'm gonna make a small bag of the Ziploc bag. I'll take my tape. Right there. Then I'm gonna fold it over to make an edge. Take another strip here. Didn't have too much, just cut the ends off. Now I have an itty bitty bag for my itty bitty beans. Load these up. This actually might be fun for the kids to help you out with too. Now you take the bean bag and you place it over here in the center of your felt. Line that felt with glue. You can use a hot glue or a super glue or pretty much whatever you have around the house that'll work on fabric. You'll take your matching felt and you'll press it around the edges. Just be sure to allow this glue or any other glue to dry before you try to use the bags. In the end, your bean bag will look like this and you're ready to go. The cool part about these bean bags is that once you make them, you have them and you can use them for other activities as well. So you pick a letter, which, le which letter are you gonna pick? D. B, all right, let's give it a toss. Let's see if she gets it. Let's see if she gets it. <gasps> oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, Lenny, it's your turn. It's like your turn, all right. What, what letter are you gonna try to toss yours into? She can get it. Yeah! <laughs> Girl, good job, all right. Okay, okay, go on, right, one more time. You hit it, you, you hit this, I know you can do it. After the kids get used to the letters and words on the bins, then you can sort of step it up a notch. You can start keeping score, or you can even have them step back a little bit further, see if you can get them more engaged, more excited. All right, cool, when I count to three, we're gonna jump right over into our spots. Okay, ready? One, two, three, let's get it. All right, okay, all right. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. You guys get to pick whichever bin you wanna throw it in. Lennon, since you're the youngest, you go ahead and pick which one you wanna try to toss it in. Get that's in. Oh, it's okay. Okay, give it a shot again. Give it another shot. Oh, that's a good shot. Hey, Island, which one do you want to try? You know what? Try, try the, try for the L. Hit that, hit that L for your sister. Hit that L for Lennon. Oh, it's pretty close. Keep going. Shoot, shoot the bag over. Let's see if see if you hit that L one. Yeah, there you go. Right, good job. Good job. Let me see your celebration dance. Can I hit it? Dance, not sing. There you go, good job. Let me see your celebration dance. <laughs> we're having a lot of fun, but we're also exercising some letter recognition and some word recognition as well. Yeah. So I changed up the letters, and now they are words. here. They're words, man. <laughs> Match it up. There you go, purple bag, purple linen. But we also got an opportunity to really work on some hand-eye coordination, which really went a long way, especially with Lennon, who was doing a great job, uh, really helped build her confidence. Yeah, it's good. You always cheer for yourself. All right, what, I, I, what are you shooting for right now? Uh, school. School, okay, all right. Oh, look, here we go. Linen. Nice, good job. You can do it. Yeah, the first shot, that a girl, nice. That a girl, oh nice, look at that, have to celebrate, it's time to celebrate. There you go. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. 
In this video, we're going to show you how to make these beautiful valentines with your kids. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolyn, and these are my good friends Phoebe. Hi. And her little sister Kira. Hello. Carolyn's the best babysitter ever. We always do craft projects together. Well, I'm glad you like my projects because crafting is so good for your brains. It promotes creativity, and it teaches kids how to problem solve when things don't turn out exactly as planned. And doing a craft project is a great way to practice fine motor skills, which we need for writing. You are so smart. Today, we're going to show you how to make these beautiful valentines using a toilet paper tube as a stamp. We'll show you how. For this craft, you're going to need some construction paper, a pencil, some safety scissors, some toilet paper tubes, paper plates, and some paint. The first step is to make a paper heart. Just fold your construction paper in half like this. Good job. And then you draw a half of a heart as a cutting guide. Just be sure to start at the crease. Phoebe can do this step by herself, but I'm gonna help Kira and draw the line with her. Good job. See, it's a half a heart. And then just cut it out. If you're not comfortable with your kids using scissors, you can always start them with a pre-cut heart and just let them do the decorating. Let's see. Yay! Beautiful. To decorate our cards, I'm gonna show you how to make stamps out of a toilet paper tube. I love this trick. You just flatten the tube like this and then fold one end in like that. See, it's a heart. Now just dip it in the paint and stamp away. Here's another nifty trick. You can also make a flower stamp. Phoebe, can you show us how? Love to. You just smush the tube to make a petal shape like this. Then you dip it in the paint and stamp it on, connecting each petal at one end. What a beautiful flower. Wow, I love it. And another option is that you can simply just use the tube as a circle stamp. Okay, guys, let's make more valentines. I'm gonna make flowers this time. I'm gonna do hearts and flowers. Great idea. Oh, guys, these turned out great. You're gonna make a lot of people very happy. Carolyn, we made this one for you. Aw, thanks guys. And I made these for you. Thank <laughs> you. Aw, thanks. <laughs> Try making these Valentines at home with your kids and send us a photo or video to show us how they turned out. And tune into our YouTube channels to find lots of fantastic videos for you and your kids. As always, we'd love to hear from you. So type in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jane, and I love crafting with my kids, Alex, and Emily, because it helps them learn a lot about themselves and how to get along with others. These are important skills for success in school. I like doing crafts because you can turn trash into pretty things. And I love glitter. So in this video, we're going to show you a fun craft that turns empty water bottles and toilet paper tubes into musical shakers. With glitter. <laughs> yes, Alex, plenty of glitter. <laughs> for each shaker, you need an empty and dry water bottle, 
The short 8 ounce kind works best. A toilet paper tube or paper towel tube cut in half, scissors, electrical tape, a funnel, and something to fill the bottle with. We're using beans to make noise and glitter to make it pretty, but you can use whatever you want. Little jingle bells, paper clips, rice, beads, and confetti, anything that'll fit. All right, let's get started. The first step is to fill your bottles a third of the way with beans and glitter or whatever you're using. I've learned early on that it's best to keep glitter in a contained region. It can get pretty messy. Put that lid on good and tight. We cut the tube next, right? That's right. Do you want to go first? Sure. Emily can do her own cutting, but usually I handle it for Alexandra, especially when it comes to thicker material like cardboard. All done. Now, can you put this over the mouth of the bottle? Step five, tape the tube to the bottle. Make sure to tape the tube very securely to the bottle. I know the next step. What is it? Decorating with tape. That's right. Yeah, and I want to use silver, blue, and white. Oh my goodness, okay, let's do it. Why don't we start with silver first? Okay. Great. How about I will cut the pieces of tape for you, and then you can tape them on the tube. Okay. Are you done with the white tape yet? Can I use it? Sure. Okay. One thing I love about crafting is that it's a great way to teach your kids how to take turns and work together. Look, Mom, I made a heart. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. I made one for you too, Alex. Thank you so much. So are you guys all done? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to try them out? Sure. sure. Let's do it. And there you have it. These shakers are pretty to look at and fun to play with. And when your kids use them as instruments, they learn about rhythm and patterns. Try this craft at home and let us know how it goes with a photo or video tagged Mother Goose Club or leave comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for other crafts, tips, activities, and more. Bye! Let's do it again. <laughs> From there? Okay. Okay. <laughs>
cream of tartar, and food coloring. And we'll also need some glitter because we're making our dough sparkly. Phoebe and Kira help me with the measuring, which is a great thing for them to learn. Okay, are you guys ready to add the ingredients? Yeah! Okay, first, one cup of flour. Phoebe? It's hard to come out. There you go. Good job. All right, second, we're gonna add one cup of water, and I'll do that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, third, a quarter cup of salt. All right, Kira, good job. Now, we'll add one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and I'll do that. It's very tiny. It is very tiny. One tablespoon. Here we go. Then, we add two teaspoons of cream of tartar. Do you each want to add one teaspoon? Yeah. Okay. And with your finger, you want to level that off? Yeah, good job. Now right into the pan. Good job. So Kira, do you see what Phoebe did? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then level it off. Good job. Nice, okay. Now it's time to add the food coloring. What color should we make our Play-Doh? Blue. Blue, sounds good. So let's add 10 drops of blue food coloring to the pan. I can add five and Kira can add five since five plus five is 10. Perfect, all right, let's count together. One, One two, three, four, Five. Good job. Okay. Now, Phoebe, your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Good job, guys. Now, with a wooden spoon, we stir everything together until it's mostly mixed up. Good job. Phoebe, do you want to try? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Kira. Nice. It sounds bubbly. It does sound bubbly, doesn't it? Now we keep stirring until most of the lumps are gone. It already smells like Play-Doh. It does smell like Play-Doh. Once the mixture looks smooth, we put the pan on the stove over medium heat and continue stirring the mixture while it's heating. To be safe, I do the cooking part, but I make sure to show Phoebe and Kira what's happening in the pan as the mixture starts to change because it's a neat process to watch. After a couple of minutes, you'll start to see solid clumps forming in the pan. Continue to stir these clumps together until they form one giant doughy mass. It happens pretty quickly. Hey guys, come look at this. See, it's starting to look like dough. Once your dough looks like this, turn off the heat and take your pan over to the counter and dump the dough onto a plate. Now the dough is very warm, so I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle. Now just knead the warm dough until it feels mixed up. Do you guys wanna try? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. What does that feel like, Kira? It feels like sticky ice cream. Sticky ice cream, what do you think, Phoebe? I think it feels like melted ice cream. Like melted ice cream, yeah. Does it feel mixed up? Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's it. Let's add the glitter to make it sparkly. You got it. What color should we use? Pink. Pink? I like that idea. All right. So we just make a dent in the middle, like this. And then we add glitter. Like that. And then just knead it 
until it's spread throughout. See, wasn't that easy? I love being able to make any color we want. Me too. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> what does it feel like? It feels like squishy dough. Squishy dough. I like to go like this. I'm yeah. glad we went with the blue. The blue is a pretty color. It is a pretty color. With pink sparkles. I like to poke it. Poke, 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 poke. I'm going to stick it. Yeah. I'm going to try and make a snail. If you store your dough in a plastic baggie or airtight container, it will keep for several months. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by showing us how you and your kids did this project. We love to hear from you. So hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club and type stories into the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Other Mother Goose Club is kind of tongue twister. <laughs> Goose Club Playhouse. Playhouse.